Hello and welcome to Arm with Controllers. This is Fabs returning to Final Fantasy V. So, um, today I'm going to be taking on the Fork Tower, which, if you mispronounce, could end really badly. So, the gimmick behind this place is that um, on one side I can only use physical attacks, and on the other I can only use magical attacks. <laughs> Whoa, how wacky. So, there we go. So, I'm going to send Butts, who is currently a Dragoon, and Faris over to the physical tower, uh, Faris currently being a knight. And as such, Krill and Rina, who are a, a red mage and geomancer respectively, they're taking the magic only side. So, um, basically in between the last video where we defeated Xdeath and some bad stuff happened, what has occurred is that the two worlds, the first world and the world we were on last time, they have merged into the original super world, as it were. They were originally split up to prevent the void, which is like a dark, evil, magic of, uh, place of sorts. Now, to pre prevent that from taking over and causing issues, Xdeath has forced the two worlds together in order to claim the power for himself and generally be a bit of a dick. Okay, so here we are in the magic tower. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that I am editing this video to exclude, um, at least on this side, all of the random encounters because basically, as we know, I've only got a red mage and so the magic only goes up to level 3 which means the fights will take forever. Um, because annoyingly, geomancy, that counts as a physical attack in this. And what does that mean? Yes, it means that I get completely screwed over. So I've, I've cut the random battles because no one wants to sit and watch me run for five minutes. True story. So there we go. So let's go to the physical side instead. Now see, this is far more forgiving. First off, just going to quickly um, make sure that my dudes are properly equipped. Giving them elf cloaks because that means they can, uh, there's a chance of them dodging attacks. Which is very helpful because this being the physical side, the random counters do hit hard. So. Um, at this point in the plot, uh, my intrepid team, they're currently looking to gain uh, uh, lithographs, which I can use to unlock the legendary weapons used by 12 awesome warriors who sealed a previous really bad dude in the Zoid. Zoid? In the Void. No, not Zoids, I've been looking at too much mecha stuff lately. So yes, um, at the moment I do have a few of these weapons. I've got uh, Butts there, he's got the Holy Lance. And Faris has the Excalibur, you know, just happens to be kicking around there. Which is why you're currently seeing some pretty awesome four-figure damage. Get used to it now, because it's not happening when we get to the magic side. But that's a depressing story for another time. Ah, the Death Sickle. Now, if you ever do find yourself stuck with um, a Berserker while doing one of these runs, the Death Sickle makes life a lot easier. Largely because you can send it up, kill in one hit insta-kill things. It's wonderful. So yes, um, at the top of these towers are two awesome magics, which I'm not going to get to use, but I'm, so I'm really doing this just for completion's sake and you know, maybe help up my levelling. Um, basically Holy and Flare. They are sitting at the top, guarded by two guardians as such. Um, to, well, once I beat them I get that spell, so that's pretty simple. And it's a dual knight, or two of them in fact. I can't help but wonder if that should be dual, as in D-U-E-L, rather than D-U-A-L. A mystery for another day, I think. Especially since they went down rather easily. You call them knights. Ha! Ha! I say. Okay, so, let's keep running up that hill, like Cape Bush. It was Cape Bush, that wasn't it? Yes, yes it was. Okay, so. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Rather sneaky of the developers if you think about it, just have the, have the things um, reverse entirely. Okay, so another quick bit of uh, equipment shuffling here, because uh, the upcoming boss absorbs holy attacks. And of course both their awesome weapons are holy based. Thanks universe. It's okay, I mean the partisan is terribly weak, but it, it combined with jump it should do a few, bit of damage. And the defender there is a pretty awesome sword in that has a chance to uh, block physical attacks, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so we have to take these uh, magics at the same time or everything bad happens apparently. How are they shouting at each other across there? Uh, uh, butts and really has, must have some pretty damn good lungs on them, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so... Boss battle, baby! Ha ha! Okay, and it's the Minotaurus. Now then, we've all played FF8 here, I assume. You might recognise this guy. Um, in fact, there was also another uh, creature very similar to this as a random encounter in the previous dungeon, the uh, Bludgeoner. You see, you might, if you FF8 players, you might recognise this guy and his uh, chum as the brothers. So yeah, that's a bit of a surprise if you think about it. Uh, another random encounter, another random boss made into a summon for a later FF game. Yeah, sometimes it's, e it's easy to forget just how much influence this one did have on future Final Fantasies. Which is a pretty nice feeling, I think. Okay, so, we're just uh, casually hitting this guy, doing bits of damage. Can't hit us, because he's stupid. Ha! <laughs> there we go, see? I, I do like these different block animations in this. You know, you've got the, the sword block and... Oh, good lord. Is that all? There was a random encounter earlier that did a critical for a thousand, so I don't know what's going on in there. Okay. Oh, crap. He's casting holy on me. Not enough MP! <laughs> Uh, if you're sadistic enough, you actually, you, you can give that guy an ether, and then he'll have enough MP to cast Holy. <laughs> but why would you do that? Why indeed? Okay, so, that's the Minotaurus dead. And I've got Holy! I'm never going to be able to cast this, so what's the point? Ugh. I'm silly. Okay, now it's the ladies with their particular nightmare. Okay, another quick bit of equipping, just making sure. Okay, they both have the wall rings, because yes, this next fight is a bitch. I'm going to tell you now, I have edited the hell out of this, because I think it took me about 20 minutes, 25 minutes all told, just fighting this guy. So let's see, okay, so, let's cast some magic. Let, let's do this, okay, we've done 11,000 damage, 1100 even. And it, yeah, if you do any kind of physical attack, anything that isn't quote unquote magic, he will cast return. Restarting everything. That's annoying, to be honest. So, okay. So, all his attacks are magic, so I can bounce him back off of him, which is good. The only problem is, the best magic I can do on him currently does about 200 to 300 damage. And he has 17,000 life. And he has regen. So, yeah, this, this fight, it takes a while. Now, one thing you can actually do is, you can berserk the Omniscient, at which point, yeah, he can't do any damage. Well, don't do magic, sorry. Then you can do, uh, yeah, he can't, he can't cast return, so you can do whatever you like. It's uh, not as good an idea as it might sound, because his physical attack does about a thousand at a time. Now, of course, yeah, as you can see here, casting Drain, that does, that can't be um, countered, so you do actually need to pay attention to this fight, sadly. Oh well, it's, it's nice of him to cast Scan, because that way I can see how I'm doing. Okay, this is about 5 minutes in now, and I've only done 2,000 damage. Thanks, Universe. So here's one thing it can do, though. It, he will cast Mute, and every so often, cast Mute and Stop, like you see here. That means that you'll have a turn, only a turn, in which you can do a non-magic attack, because he can't then respond to that with the turn. It's ridiculously risky, of course, because if you're too slow in can't doing the attack, you will find that, yeah, your cast return and all your hard work will be for naught. It's very annoying. So yes, it has got to the point where I have to start using my ethers now. Oh, and no, look, he's cast Reflect on himself. Isn't that nice? Hmm. Yes, it is. All right, then. So yeah, the fight really is... The, uh, the fight I did, at least, was basically us consistently casting Fire 2. Uh, well, Ice 2. Bolt to him, whatever. Okay, halfway there, yay. That was after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I'm just it's cut right towards the end now because when he's on his last legs, he will do the third level magics, which of course, as you saw there, only do about 700 damage to him. It's okay because he's dying. So yeah, this is about you know 15, 20 minutes later, and God knows how many ethers. Wee. It's okay. He's gonna die now. Going to die and it's going to be glorious. 
still, he's got obscenely high magic defense. Which makes the fact that you can't hit him physically really annoying. Ugh. I wish I had a blue mage, then I could cast Aero 3. Uh, he'd go down like, like a lamp or something, because apparently lamps go down now. Oh well, never mind. So I wonder if he's going through the um, level 3 magics in turn. So it, it did seem like he went from fire, like, well, ice, fire, then bolt. Never mind. Okay, because we know that he's dying now, which is the important thing. And, ugh. Only 200 damage. Why? That was. We saw four figure damage. Three thousands. It was glorious. Never mind, he's dead now because he just cast Flare. Which I reflected back onto him. Ha ha ha. Oh dear. That's gonna sting. And noticeably, only as a thousand. So yeah, he does have obscenely high magic defense. Now. Yeah. Luckily, he's dead now, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. Okay, so, that was the Fork Tower. Join me next time for further Final Fantasy fun. Uh, yeah, I think I think you'll see somebody... Well, Final Fantasy fans, they'll recognise the next boss I'll be up against, I think. And it'll be a nice surprise for everyone. Okay, so, this has been Fabs, Armed with Controllers. Please like and subscribe. And, as always, game hard. <laughs>